welcome to the Asia and the Pacific Policy Conference 2014, hosted by the Crawford School of Public Policy at the ANU. I'm here with Beth Slattier, who is an honorary fellow with the Nossel Institute for Global Health. Beth, uh, what is public financial management? Ah, well, the neglected public health priority of the Pacific. <laughs> um, public financial management are the processes that governments use to translate the resources that they have, the financial resources that they have, into the activities that they need to do as a government. Uh, that can range from their um, uh, operations of their bureaucracy right down to the service delivery level, the delivery of health and education services. And often people use the term the PFM cycle. It runs through from the preparation of the budget, um, the, the work that goes into thinking about what needs to be in the budget and what things cost before that, uh, then um, uh, translation of the budget into the annu annual operational plans and, and budgets for specific areas or activities, um, through to the expenditure, the acquittal, uh, the audit process and back around. So it's often referred to as a cycle for that reason. Now I know that you referred to public financial management during the conference as a neglected health priority. Why do you see it in that way? Well, I've spent a lot of time uh, over my career working on health um, and I've spent about the last seven or eight years working in the Pacific uh, on health, working uh, mostly with AusAid. Um, and it became apparent that um, there was a real implementation gap. There are a lot of um, people with a lot of goodwill and expert knowledge about public health issues and how to um, deliver health services or uh, address a particular disease. But when it comes down to implementation, what that means is that the resources have to go to health facilities or they have to go into the drug budget or they have to go into paying health workers. Um, and it's often that step where the resources don't get to where they're needed that means the service is not delivered. So the way that, as I was saying earlier, the way that governments translate resources into activities is through using their PFM system, their public financial management system. That's whether they're delivering the service themselves or whether they're contracting it out to somebody else. Um, and so by paying more attention to public financial management and the processes that governments are actually using to get resources where they need to go, everybody can benefit by, if, if everybody puts their effort into those processes and making that work better, it's more likely that the health services will be delivered to the populations. Now, it's often said that the Pacific is awash with plans and obviously public financial management requires a lot of planning. Where is that gap between doing the planning and the actual implementation? Mm, no, that's a really good question. The, I mean, I think we all know health is complex. There are a lot of diseases uh, and there are a lot of priorities. And what often happens is that there's a plan for each disease or a plan for each priority. The dilemma is that the part of the planning that, and often those plans are at a strategic level, they don't really link to resources, or if they do, it's really an overall resource envelope for, for one disease or the other. What gets less attention is the planning for that ongoing health service delivery, what they call in PNG, keeping the doors open. Um, just the business of paying the health workers, making sure the maintenance is done, um, delivering the drugs out of the warehouse, those sorts of things are often the neglected part. Um, so it's true that there are a lot of plans, but some of the most important planning, which actually links the funding to the service you're trying to deliver, is often not done as much. It used to be done more 10 or 15 years ago, but everybody's been so exercised by capturing these big global amounts of money and donor funding for specific diseases that somehow the expertise in that operational planning uh, seems to have been a little bit neglected. So do you think that public financial management should be linked directly with service delivery? Well, some of the listeners might want to go and look at the presentation that John Peel from Papua New Guinea gave at the conference. It was a really excellent analysis of how those things do link. Exactly what it takes to translate what you intend to do into resources in a way that you can be confident that the funds will be spent. Uh, so that, um, that, um, that, that is, was a really good uh, analysis, I think, and description of the, of the good process. So how can central agencies work to better promote public financial management down through all the layers of government? Mm. Well, of course, 
that's an issue where there is quite a lot of variation country by country. The role of some of the central, the central agencies in Papua New Guinea with its decentralised system is quite different to somewhere like Tonga. Um, and um, the, the relationship, the actual role and responsibility of the central agency as opposed to the line agency does differ from country to country. But nevertheless, I think all central agencies are, uh, are responsible for, one, ensuring that there actually is a clear system to follow, um, helping the ministries, the line agency ministries with their very difficult service delivery responsibilities to use that system to, uh, to good effect, and then help uh, reinforcing the importance of that, those processes with, with the line agencies. Um, things like audit, things like perform, um, uh, performance management, they're not easy things to do. So line agencies do need a central agency partner to help them work through some of those things. Thank you so much for your time today, Beth. It's a pleasure.